Welcome to, uh, this is EPA session on the Nutrient Recycling Challenge. This is Joseph Ziobro. I'm Hema Subramanian, and this is our other partner in crime, Kristen Jones. Um, how many of you were at Waste to Worth in Seattle, the last one? Yeah, we remember um, some of you were on our panel last time, too. Um, so the Nutrient Recycling Challenge is an idea that we thought was a crazy idea and we kind of just held a brainstorm session about back in uh, Seattle with, at, here at Waste to Worth, and it seemed to have enough promise among the brain trust that was at Waste to Worth that we actually ended up launching it. And it's basically a competition where we're trying to crowdsource uh, innovations for uh, swine and dairy operations to do nutrient recovery uh, in a way that produces nutrient-rich uh, products out of dairy and swine manure and creates valuable co-products. And the whole idea behind this challenge is that, you know, EPA is our office, and we're in the Office of Water, and we're interested in water quality and how you, um, how you can protect um, waterways from nutrient pollution, including from animal operations. But the other side of the coin is that this is a voluntary um, idea. This is something that we want uh, producers to be excited about so we want to make sure that we can find effective technologies that actually produce a return on investment and can be an economical um, a real economical opportunity for, for uh, industry to take on and so we we brought up this idea and the way we structured it back in um, in Seattle was we wanted to walk people through how to think about the demand side of the equation. Rather than starting from a precise number of, you know, how, uh, how, how much nitrogen or phosphorus you'd like to extract out of manure, like what percentage would you like to extract, we wanted to start with, well, if you're the buyer, if you're the user, if you're the, if you're the, the, the farmer that would use this technology, what would you want if you could have any kind of technology that you could have? And so, and we heard from a lot of producers that they would love a, a technology that's adoptable on farm to retrieve these nutrients and make manure management easier. So we started out with this crazy idea and then we started cold calling, essentially. Um, many of our contacts in, in, in the animal agriculture industry also, um, organizations like WERF, um, Water Environment Re Reuse Foundation, um, World Wildlife Fund, USDA, um, and also um, American so uh, Society for Agricultural and Biological Engineers. And all of a sudden, we got so much interest in this that we had 20 partners join on, Department of Energy as well, and, um, and some universities you'll see up there. And, and, the, and the idea just took off. And so we said, all right, well, let's set up some criteria committees and, um, and we can uh, and set up some goals and we can allow the group to kind of come up with together um, some criteria for the challenge. And so these are the goals that we ended up coming up with. And um, the, each of them is actually pretty important to, to the challenge. Uh, the first goal was uh, to accelerate the development of nutrient recovery technologies that can be adopted by dairy and swine farms by providing environmental and economic benefits. Um, increasing awareness of issues and opportunities related to nutrients and manure management. When, you know, from our perspective, if there's, you know, millions of tons of manure being generated and there isn't, the innovation sector isn't taking advantage of that and they're not trying, there's not enough players trying to build technologies that'll work, for us, it was a missed business case opportunity as well from our perspective. How do you encourage um, garage tinkerers <coughs> to take this on? Well, one way is to create the awareness that this is an opportunity. Um, and we also knew that there are a lot of innovators out there that uh, just don't have that much connection with the end users. They've maybe never been able to be on a farm and they've never, they may have worked in the municipal sector, the wastewater treatment sector. Dr. Pro is smiling and that's because and we, we think, I still, we still remember um, what you said at our meeting in Washington DC last year where you said working in manure can be a lonely, it's so lonely it's, working it's in manure. It's so lonely working in manure. <laughs> um, we wanted to make you less lonely. We That's why to, we did this. And we wanted to make people meet each other and actually find out what does the demand want rather than building something that no one's going to buy. Um, and finally, you know, it doesn't just stop with a with a machine that 
you know, sucks nutrients out of the manure, well, what are you going to do with those nutrients, right? If you have to find a market for that, that's how you make it affordable. Because the capital cost could be high, so you have to make it back somehow in a return on investment. So stimulating markets for products that are generated from these technologies was a big part of it. Uh, so we launched this challenge in November of 2015, and the the challenge was open for a 60-day uh, submission period. And we ended up getting 75 applications or proposals. And out of those, in, after fa we structured it as a four-phase competition. Um, and and the, there was a reason for this. Uh, what we wanted was just concept papers in phase <coughs> one because we wanted anyone with an idea to get involved. It doesn't matter if you're an engineer or not, if you're a student. It doesn't matter. If you have an idea, just submit it. And um, maybe you don't know how to build it, but maybe we can connect you with someone who can build it. And that kind of creates a floor where you get fresh ideas. We also made it a global competition, which um, Joseph will tell you about in a minute, so that you know you can get ideas from other countries that might be doing interesting stuff in this in this area. And then um, once the 60-day submission period for concept papers were over, we had a fantastic judging panel of people who are much smarter than me. <laughs> you know, much more expertise than just uh, either of us um, that helped us evaluate these uh, 75 proposals and it was about 32 judges I believe on that panel um, and they and then we selected 34 of these teams to move on to phase two where they would be building technology designs and there was a real diversity in these innovators that competed anyone from you know someone who really had the you know sophisticated idea, maybe they even had technologies in demonstration already, and you'll get to hear from some of these innovators here today. Our project um, is better than all of us. <laughs> <laughs> um, and all the way to people who just had a fresh idea. So um, so at the end of phase, so now, right now, where we, are, where we are is that at the end of phase one, we had an award ceremony. We brought all the folks in. Actually, I think that might be a couple of slides up. Yeah, we had a summit. Um, and we presented, and some of these folks in this picture are here in the room today to talk to you. Um, and we then um, provided some cash prizes to some of the top 10. And we kicked off phase two later in the year where they're now building technology designs. And right now where we are is that we're kind of wrapping up phase two. And um, so I'm gonna let Joseph kind of start telling you about some of the submissions that came in and then we can go back to where we are today. Thanks, Hema. So we just want to give you a little bit more detail about some of the submissions that came in in phase one uh, and kind of give you a sense of the breadth of technology ideas that we, we got in in the concept papers. Um, before talking about those in a little more detail, we just want to point out this are, there's some maps up here. Um, the top map is actually where people registered to look at the challenge. It was posted on Innocentive, uh, which is a, a company that does innovation challenges, helps uh, agencies and others run them. Um, so that was where the sort of interest was, where people registered, and then the map down below um, shows where the submissions actually came in from. Um, so there's kind of a giant little pin in the middle of North America there, and that's probably representing you know about 50-something uh, papers, and then the rest you can see. We pretty much got every continent except Antarctica. Um, so, we wanted to make sure, as Hema said, to have that global uh, appeal. Um, we realized there was a lot of interesting innovation happening in um, areas like in the Netherlands and in Asia and other places. So we didn't want to just limit it to the US. So ultimately, as Hema mentioned, we had 75 um, submissions come in um, while the challenge was open. It was one of the most popular uh, challenges. It was on uh, GSA's challenge.gov website. Um, and we had a lot of traffic and a lot of news and media hits. Um, and one of the, the sort of greatest reasons, we think, for the interest in the challenge in phase one, um, it wasn't necessarily because we went out and told the world about it. It was because many of our partners, including Tyson, Smithfield, Ben & Jerry's, the Milk Cooperatives, uh, a number of those partners you see there on our banner, they graciously went out and let the world know what we were doing, let producers know, know what we were doing. And that was always an important part of this. We didn't just want this to fall on the no offense, but the academic innovators, as Hema mentioned, we wanted to make sure that we were also involving the perspective of the end users of the technologies, potential third party developers. So our partners were great in spreading the word. 
So a little more about the concepts in phase one out of the 75 submissions, we had a little pie chart up there. It shows 62% said their technologies would recover nutrients from both swine and dairy, 29 for just dairy, and 9% for just swine, and all, pretty much every technology class under the sun was represented, mechanical, biological, chemical, thermal, and hybrid systems. And then on this next slide, so just give you a sense of some of the co-products that were uh, proposed to be generated by these systems, so everything from the bio-oils and biogases, syngases, um, through a range of uh, phosphate products, uh, biochar, hydrochar, struvite, uh, nutrient cake, and then some worm castings, um, peat moss substitutes, and some of the papers also looked at different ways to generate things like animal feedstuffs, proteins, as well as reusable potable water. So pretty much everything under the sun. So Hama talked a little bit about this uh, summit at the, the, end of, uh, the end of phase one. Once we selected the 34 winners, um, we did a little, award a little bit of cash, uh, and we invited all of the 34 teams to join us in DC at the uh, White House Eisenhower Executive Office Building and World Wildlife Fund headquarters. Uh, and for us, this was really an opportunity to A, get the innovators finally in a room with some of the partner organizations, the end users, so they could have some informal conversations, uh, learn a little bit more about what uh, dairy and swine producers are asking for. Um, we also wanted to give the innovators an opportunity to talk a little bit about their concepts uh, at the summit and get some live feedback from folks in the audience. Um, I know some folks like uh, Dr. Roa had no problem uh, giving plenty of feedback to some of the other innovators. Um, and that's exactly what we wanted to see. It's not just about, you know, even though it is a prize competition, it wasn't necessarily just about one team winning over another. We really wanted to create this atmosphere where innovators would have the opportunity to help each other out um, to the extent they were willing and uh, allow each other to make the most robust designs possible. Can you go back to the last slide? Absolutely. So um, one thing I just want to mention here, there's such a diversity in types of technologies, and if you put <coughs> them into categories, some are biological, thermal, some are chemical, some are physical, and a lot of um, people have asked us, but what was the winner? Like, what were you really looking for? What was the type that you were trying to get to? And, and it's really important here that we retained a diversity in ideas, and we did it on purpose because different types of solutions are going to work. We keep hearing from producers, no two farms are alike, no two conditions are alike. We, we all need different things. Some are small, some are big, some have existing systems you have to hook up into. So. In order to respond to that request and that demand, we ended up trying to just float the boat of any idea that was promising rather than eliminating certain categories of ideas. And so, you know, what ends up being viable as they move from concept to technology design to prototype is, I mean, it could be any type of idea. And so, and, and also some, <coughs> have we heard that some folks started with one idea and transition to a totally different idea by after learning more about what the industry needed or what they wanted. So um, I just wanted to point that out that I think that might be a question that comes up is, you know, well, that's a lot of different tech. How do you even evaluate them against each other? And the answer is that we don't. We just are looking, with our panel, we were looking for viability of the idea rather than competing, you know, biochar against city gas, you know. And one other thing I would mention as well is that some of the things you see up here aren't necessarily novel technologies or novel co-products. I'm sure a lot of you are very familiar with many of these products. And it wasn't um, necessarily that, we weren't excluding things that were already in existence, but as Hema mentioned earlier, we really wanted to make sure we were putting a focus on the economic viability, and we wanted to make sure that the technology would actually meet the end needs of the user. Um, so that could mean, you know, is it going to put so much demand on the farmer that he or she can no longer milk cows? Um, so we wanted to make sure to, to factor that into the equation. So if you're seeing things that look familiar, um, what we would expect in this process is that through the connections that are made and through the feedback they receive from us and the partners, um, that there can be some tweaks made to the system that while it is a familiar product, perhaps there could be something done at some stage that would reduce energy throughputs. Uh, perhaps there could be something done uh, that actually focuses more on the co-product generation and, and creating or infiltrating markets. So. Um, these do look familiar, but we hope that once the technologies actually get built, some of those issues, the major barriers that have prevented some of these products from entering the market mainstream will have been addressed to the extent possible. So moving on, 
phase one, uh, as Hema mentioned, concluded uh, in early 2016, uh, in March, at the summit formally. <coughs> and then we had a little bit of a break period where we went back into development of phase two with the partner organizations. And ultimately, one of the things we decided was it was very important to expose the innovators in the Nutrient Recycling Challenge to those perspectives that I just mentioned, as well as provide them with as much information as possible to empower them to develop the most robust technology designs as possible. So rather than structuring phase two as another prize competition phase where innovator teams were competing against each other, we wanted to take this opportunity to uh, essentially provide them with the feedback I just mentioned. So this program was structured as a program of incubation and support. And uh, one of the hallmarks of the program was a series of informational webinars where a number of folks in this room generously offered their time to impart their best wisdom and knowledge to the innovator teams in the challenge. So we had uh, a number of webinars in phase two, and I just want to give you a sense of the ones we held. So a general webinar to kick things off, how to develop technology designs in the Nutrient Recycling Challenge, and what we did is develop a format, uh, a suggested content for a technology design paper um, that imparted a lot of those perspectives. Uh, so what producers were looking for specifically, now that you're moving from a concept to design, what are some things you should be thinking about? So we provided that to the innovators and just said a little bit about that in the first webinar, and then we moved into some more technical webinars. So for those innovator teams who were coming from the municipal or industrial sectors, we wanted to give an overview of manure management for dairy and swine. Um, we also provided some information about lessons learned from previous nutrient recovery technology projects, and we'll actually learn a little bit more about that today from uh, Jeff Porter at NRCS. Uh, and then importantly, we had a couple of webinars that focused on building the business case for the technologies, as well as different ways to potentially fund your technologies, whether that be through federal grant programs that may be applicable to technology developers or end users, uh, and the private sector as well. And Finally, just given the, the sheer number of technology concept papers we received in phase one that uh, stated they were compatible with anaerobic digester systems, if not actually um, more feasible um, post-digestion, we wanted to make sure we provided some general information about anaerobic digesters and what the lay of the land looks like and try to set some realistic expectations about the digester scene in the US. Um, right now, we are currently in the process of scheduling one-on-one -on -one appointments for interested innovator teams to meet with a variety of experts. So some folks uh, such as Dr. Vinodi here at USDA, um, ARS and others have volunteered their time generously to meet with these innovators and discuss their technology design papers, provide a little bit of feedback, and hopefully get them moving in the right direction. Finally, uh, this brings us to now. I think this is Waste to Worth, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So here we are at the Waste to Worth conference and we just figured this was too good of an opportunity. There are too many minds working on the exact sorts of technology solutions that we're interested in, in the context of the challenge, uh, to miss up on the opportunity to talk about the challenge here and give the innovators an opportunity to say a little bit more about their technologies now that they've come along um, several months later and get some feedback from the audience. One thing I do want to mention is, as part of phase two, one of the things that we are committed to doing is providing a sort of resource on the various markets, both current and potential, for value-added manure products. Um, and we are currently undertaking this project with support of funding from DOE's Bioenergy Technologies Office. So Kristen here in the front row has um, been slugging away the past several months, putting together a little bit of an annotated bibliography, um, doing uh, some initial research and kind of scouring the web uh, and academic journals to get a sense of what sort of peer review literature is out there uh, that actually includes some sort of economic assessment uh, or a business plan as part of that paper. Uh, and we'll see a little bit more about that in just a moment. And finally, um, we are developing a SharePoint site. So for some of you uh, who have been involved in the challenge for quite a while, you may know that uh, EPA doesn't always do things that gracefully. Uh, one thing <coughs> is a, a file sharing site that was a little bit clunky, a little bit ugly, a little bit awkward to use, um, but that was essentially developed post-summit at the request of a lot of the innovator teams to provide a forum where innovators could share ideas, where resources could be exchanged, where we could let each other know, you know what sort of events are happening, like Waste Worth, that might be fun to show up at and, and feature the challenge, 
or just here are some talks that focus on you know, nutrient recovery. So we wanted that to be a forum and it worked, it was crude, um, but we thought we could do things a little bit better. So we ultimately started developing a SharePoint site. I should say Kristen. Um, whenever I say we, I just, just mean Kristen. Um, so we can go in and see a little bit more about that now. Kristen, you want to come yeah. up and just quickly talk about the market assessment in the SharePoint? So what, what Kristen's going to show you next, no one has seen yet. Um, we're actually just including our innovators and our partners. So this is the first time we're releasing you all previews of what's coming out soon. So first is the market assessment project. So what we've essentially done is combined a um, extensive literature search of web of science um, using their advanced search methods and <coughs> Boolean um, search sets to um, tease out some of the papers that are specifically on um, how um, how some of these products have been performing in the markets already, um, the technologies behind them, anything that may be of use to um, the innovators in the Nutrient Recycling Challenge, um, as well as doing a website search um, and also supplemental Google Scholar search. So what you have here is some of the academic journals and technical papers that we've come across. Um, and we tried to put them into different categories like algae, um, biochar, struvite, and then kind of developing a menu for innovators to sort through our almost 100 page annotated <laughs> bibliography. Um, uh, an easier way to sort through that based on their more specific interests, um, whether that's the industry, the economics of a particular product. Um, those papers that included a cost benefit analysis of some of these products. Um, you know, the technology behind them um, and any of those papers that uh, included a commercial scale demonstration of some of these technologies or the products. Any other Can I uh, add something? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so we keep finding ourselves trying to put ourselves in other people's shoes during this project. When we first started it, we tried to say, if you're a swine producer or a dairy producer, what would you need? And then now in phase two, we were asking ourselves, if you're an innovator, what do you need? If you're trying to develop, and we kept hearing from innovators, how can we find out more information about what we're competing against? How do we compete against, if we're producing a fertilizer, a pelletized fertilizer out of you know manure, what are, what are the prices we have to compete against? What's the um, transportability? What's the What are the characteristics? All these different questions were coming up, and so, um, okay, well, if that's what you need as an innovator to get closer to building a successful technology, then we're gonna try and help you find out those answers. So um, that's where Kristen came in, and we kind of developed this outline, uh, I should say Kristen did, which was kind of like the who, what, when, where, how. Like, who uses nutrient-rich products? Who uses nitrogen? Who uses phosphorus? And what form is it in? And why? Why do they use it? When do they use it? What time of year do they need it? And what form does it need to be in? And and how, like what kind of equipment, like if you're a farmer and you, you need to buy a really expensive piece of equipment to use the co-product, then that's not gonna work. So um, that's kind of the, the behind the scenes thinking that went into this project. And uh, Kristen has done the first step in it, which, um, which is this annotated bibliography, which is 90 something pages long. And the next stage of it is that we are, um, we're commissioning a more extensive in-depth look at these kind of develop a write-up that the innovators can use um, to and find their references through it. So. And what we hope is that the, the end product will be something that will A, empower innovators who are developing their technologies to think about what some of the higher value markets might be and to what extent they, they exist to point those out. Uh, and also, secondarily, it can be something that could empower innovators to approach, say, private investors down the road and say, you know, it's not this isn't just a pie in the sky idea. There's actually markets out there that exist um, because we know investors kind of want to know whether or not the thing will be sold when it's generated. All right. So with that, we move on to the SharePoint site that we've been developing. So um, the Initiate Recycling Challenge used to be housed on an FTP site, but we thought we would move over to SharePoint to facilitate more discussion and sharing amongst the community, um, as well as um, housing some useful documents and resources. Um, and so this is just a snapshot of the um, of the homepage, and you can see we have a couple of different resources here. We have a calendar on the left that 
I think was mentioned earlier, where we have um, we have a bunch of different events listed throughout the year that may be of interest to any of the uh, partners or um, people that are involved in our innovators that are involved in the nutrient recycling challenge. We have documents and resources, including some of those earlier submissions. Um, to peruse through um, any websites that may be helpful. Um, some photos from the events that we've had in the past. There may be some up there from the past Waste to Worth conferences. Um, and uh, also and announcements and a discussion forum. And this is really for you to, um, an easy way for you to talk with anybody in, involved in the Nutrient Recycling Challenge. It really is a community website. So you can, and we highly encourage you to um, submit events um, uh, to to the calendar. You can either send them to me or you can directly input them into the calendar. Um, or any documents, hey, I came across this really cool paper um, you know, this week. I think everybody should know about it. Feel free to post it. Um, and we also have some site instructions and protocols um, there. So when you log into the site, we'll send you all invites um, and you'll be able to, um, to start uploading your content. Um, but you also have a little bit more of a um, a guide to the site contained within those documents there. So just in case you're not familiar with the SharePoint environment. Um, and this can I just jump in for one yeah. second and say that one of the, the discussion we hope is, is going to be useful too, because one of the things we saw when we were conducting a lot of our webinars was that we would have webinars focused on a very specific topic and there would be some heated discussion taking place in the chat rooms. And then at some point, just when the conversation was getting good, we'd have to say, okay, the webinar is over. Try to follow up with each other at some point. So. You know, this can hopefully be an opportunity for people to have heated debates about whether or not you can get above 80% pure screw by or whatever else it is people talk about that I don't quite understand. At this point, uh, this is a resource we're building for a, kind of a closed community. It's the 34 innovator teams, it's the 20 um, partners and judges, experts who have been loaning their time for the effort. Um, so for those of you who are involved in the challenge, um, expect emails from us, especially from Kristen, um, right after this conference, we're gonna release this site. So we haven't released it yet, you haven't gotten the invitation, but, and you'll have to do a little homework. You'll have to actually sign up for the account to do it. But once you get in, it should be easy peasy to kind of navigate your way around it. And um, so, sorry for those who aren't involved in the challenge. At this point, it's not open access yet, although we can, we can think about that later on. And to everyone who wrote peer review papers that are in our annotated bibliography, thank you. There's a yeah. few in the room. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. So we actually have a couple of slides. So actually, going into the the contents of the documents folder, I'm just seeing how we have it structured a little bit, just to give you an introduction once you receive the invite, just so you're not like, whoa, what is all of this? So we have, um, we have some documents from phase one, which would be some of those submission papers, the winners of, um, of, the, of phase one of the challenge, um, those were invited to proceed, for example. We have all of the webinars, um, um, all of the PowerPoints from the webinars within this folder, um, as well as uh, links to the live, not the live, the recorded, um, the recorded live webinars. Um, and so you can just go into that folder and directly, you can either look at the PowerPoints or go directly to the webinars um, for your reference. Um, we also have um, a couple of other um, miscellaneous documents here that are um, so federal grant and um, assistance programs that you may be interested in. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so that to our little cartoon pigs. Oh, actually, 